In this video, we will explore the differences between the Oath of the Ancients and Oath of Devotion. We'll examine their spells and features and discuss the advantages of each path. Whether you're a veteran player or new to the game, this video will provide you with valuable insights into the world of Paladins and help you decide which path to take on your journey. At level 2, Oath of the Ancients gain Divine Smite. This deals radiant damage, and additional radiant damage to fiends and undead. He also unlocks his level 1 spells and will be able to cast 2 spells. He'll be required to choose a fighting style at this level. Defense will give a plus 1 bonus to armor class while wearing armor. With too many players running around naked, I guess the devs needed to add this to entice players to finally wear armor. Dueling will give a plus 2 bonus damage when using a one-handed weapon. Great Weapon Fighting lets you reroll a 1 or 2 damage rolls when using a two-handed melee weapon, and Protection allows you to inflict disadvantage on an enemy that attacks your ally. You must be using a shield for this to trigger. Divine Smite is one of the defining features of the Paladin class, so I'll be selecting all the Smite spells here. I should note that Oath of Devotion gains the same exact class features, spells and fighting styles at level 2. I'll be picking Great Weapon Fighting to differentiate them. At this level, Divine Smite will be available as a reaction. It can trigger on both critical and regular hits. Click on the Ask checkbox to manually decide whether to activate it or not as it will use up a level 1 spell slot each time. It's time to test the smites. Divine Smite will act both as a regular attack and a reaction. We'll use the regular attack here first. In the damage roll, we see the plus 2 dueling damage and the Radiant Damage from Divine Smite. Next is the Thunderous Smite. This will deal an additional Thunder Damage and will knock enemies prone. Since we have set the Divine Smite reaction to manual, we need to make a decision here whether to use a spell slot to trigger it. Here's the regular damage from our attack. The thunder damage from thunderous smite. And the radiant damage from divine smite. Here's an example of how it can knock enemies prone. Wrathful smite will deal an additional psychic damage to your attack and can frighten the enemy. Frightened enemies cannot move and will have disadvantage on their ability checks and attack rolls. This is the regular damage, and the additional psychic damage. And last, but not least, is Searing Smite. It will deal fire damage for 10 turns, as long as the caster maintains his concentration. At level 3, Paladins gain Divine Health. This gives them immunity to disease. Oath of the Ancients gain 4 subclass features. Nature's Wrath restrains an enemy for 10 turns. Turn the Faithless turns nearby Fey and Fiends for 3 turns. Both of these requires Channel Oath Charge to use. He also gains Speak with Animals and Ensnaring Strike. He can now prepare 6 spells and can cast 3. Fairy Fire is a bonus spell specific to Drow Half-Elves. Nature's Wrath will restrain enemies, meaning they can't move. And attack rolls against them have advantage. This will last for 10 turns or until they make a successful saving throw.
Turn the Faithless will cause Fey creatures to move away from the caster. This effect will end when the enemies take damage. It happens so soon here, because of the opportunity attacks. Except for this one right here, who kept on running. Ensnaring Strike has similar effects to Nature's Wrath. The only difference is, this deals piercing damage each turn. The crossbow initially only has 55% chance to hit the spectator. Fairy Fire creates a glowing outline around the target, causing attacks on them to have advantage. This increases the chance to hit to 80%. This will last for 10 turns as long as concentration is maintained. At level 3, Oath of Devotion also gains disease immunity. His subclass feature is Sacred Weapon. This will add his Charisma modifier to his attack rolls. This lasts for 10 turns. Turn the Unholy functions similar to Turn the Faithless, but it affects Fiends and Undead. Both of these requires Channel Oath Charge to cast. Sanctuary creates a magical ward around the target that prevents them from being targeted by enemies. Casting protection from good and evil will also create a magical ward and all these creatures highlighted right here will have disadvantage on their attack rolls against the warded creature. With an ability score of 16, the Charisma modifier will be 3. This will be added to the Sacred Weapon's attack roll. Since Athos is under the effect of Sanctuary, the ogres surrounded him, but won't be able to attack as long as it is active. Although, he can still take damage from area of effect spells. Nothing much happening at level 4. Both subclasses will gain another charge of Lay on hand, for a total of 4. Their prepared spells will be increased to 7, and they both get to select a feat. I'll be giving them both 2 points of strength. Lay on Hands allows the Paladin to heal damage, and cure diseases and poisons through the power of their touch. Expending 1 charge will heal 10 points, and 20 points using 2 charges. At level 5, Oath of the Ancients gets an extra attack, and can now attack twice per turn. And his level 2 spells are unlocked. His subclass features, Misty Step and Moonbeam, are truly remarkable. The level 2 spells are identical to what is available to Oath of Devotion. He can now prepare 8 spells, and can cast 4 level 1 and 2 level 2 spells. He also gets another race-specific bonus spell at this level. Darkness will blind all the creatures within its area of effect. Misty Step allows him to teleport a short distance and can be cast using a bonus action.
Moonbeam deals huge radiant damage and will remain for 10 turns as long as concentration is maintained. Casting this, with Nature's Wrath holding the enemy in place, will deal huge amounts of damage. Casting Darkness will reduce the chance to hit of everyone inside it. With Blindness, the chance to hit is just 36%. However, if you move outside its effect, the normal chance is 60%. At level 5, Oath of Devotion gains an extra attack and unlocks his level 2 spells. His subclass features are Silence and Lesser Restoration, which I think are inferior to Oath of the Ancients. The Red Cap Blood Sage is a spellcaster. He can cast Open Wound from afar. After casting Silence, it was forced to get within melee range because it can no longer use spells. Survival is all that matters. So which subclass is better? My pick is Oath of the Ancients. Nature's Wrath and Moonbeam combination is so strong. You can disengage after casting it, and just watch the enemy die from a distance. <laughs> 